record profits today. Royal Dutch Shell reported a 5% spike. That's a net income of 7.9 billion with a B dollars. ExxonMobil will announce its latest earnings this morning, and by all accounts, they too will be staggering. ABC's Bianca Goladriguez here this morning. She has the latest on all of this oil windfall. Good morning, Bianca. Good morning, Chris. Expect a lot of zeros. This morning, Exxon is expected to announce record profits for the second quarter of the year, topping only its own record for biggest quarterly profit ever by a U.S. company. Today's announcement of Exxon's massive profits continues what has been a very good year for big oil. Just how good? Well, it's expected to be even better than last year when the combined sales of the top five oil companies added up to $1.5 trillion. That's greater than the GDP of Canada. Since then, the price of crude has soared by as much as 50 percent. Those kinds of figures have sparked calls for alternatives to foreign oil now more than ever. From former oil men... I'm T. Boone Pickens. I've been an oil man my whole life, but this is one emergency we can't drill our way out of. To the executives themselves. We're ver working very hard to expand and diversify U.S. energy supply. If we could produce something here at home to, to raise our crops and run our cars, why not? It's just kind of a no-brainer. But are they putting their money where their mouth is? We crunch the numbers with Bernard Peakey, oil analyst at Wall Street Access, who says not really. They're probably spending more on the advertising than they're actually spending on the, on the actual research. Exxon has publicly said that it is not in the renewable energy business, but rather focused on oil and gas. So it should be no surprise that out of the five largest oil companies, Exxon spent just 1% of its $41 billion in profits last year on alternative energy sources. But none of the others fared much better. The company that invested the most in alternatives? BP. But even that was 2.5%. What they spent on alternative energy was just a drop in the bucket, probably about $2 billion. But experts also argue that oil companies won't have incentive to change their policies until Washington changes its policies. Politicians have been hammering Exxon for what they say is too much emphasis on stock buyback policies instead of investing in alternative exploration. But Chris Exxon and industry experts note that the company's main obligation is to its shareholders, many of which are large pension and mutual funds that have a wide spectrum of Americans depending on them. All right, thanks, Bianca. That's the tension there. A lot of numbers here. Let's try to make some sense of them. We have Mike Santoli here. He's with Barron's. He understands all of this. All right, we have a beautifully drawn example of a barrel of oil yes. here. Let's look at each dollar that comes into the company. Where does it go? Okay. Biggest chunk, believe it or not, goes to taxes around the world, various types of taxes. About 45% uh, of the income that uh, ExxonMobil last year, by the way, had from a barrel of oil went to taxes. About 30% or so was Exxon's profit. Okay. So it made about a 30% margin. Again, this is only the business of Exxon taking the oil and gas out of the ground and selling it. It's not selling it at the pump. So this is only the part of the business where they're actually drilling for it and selling oil. Uh, then you have production costs, 12%. Other administrative and operating costs of 11%. And somewhere between 1% and 2%, somewhere in the low single digits, is spent on new research and exploration. Okay, so now this brings shock and awe and some outrage, right? But should it? Are they supposed to be spending more money, this particular company? Look, a, a company, when it has its profits, can decide to reinvest it in, uh, in new business and looking for more of the resource. Exxon clearly thinks it doesn't have enough profitable opportunities to do that over the long term. I would also point out we've had oil busts in the 80s and the 90s, and big companies were burned for having spent too much money. I will point out, though, 2% of an enormous number is an ever-rising big number in terms of the dollars spent. So what do you think we're dealing with here? Is this politics? Is this media portrayal? Or is this reality of business. It's understandable frustration and it's a disagreement about what the management of this big company is doing with its money and I'll point out that uh, the money devoted to share buybacks and dividends has really gone vertical in the last uh, 15 years. One percent of profits up to about 55 percent of profits last right, so, year. So what we're talking about here is they get let's say that 30 percent profits of taking oil out of the ground and delivering it. You distinguish that from gas stations which is smart right. because tough to make money at the gas stations right That's now right. because the prices are so high. All right now what they do with this money buying back shares. Why do they do that? Who's that good for? They're giving money back to the shareholders who own the company because they don't believe that they have a good profitable use 
for that money in terms of finding new oil and gas. I'll point out, big oil companies privately owned only have access to about 10 percent of world oil reserves. It's not as if they can just easily spend money and find uh, new sources of energy. Now, and, and again, and when we look at that, so you, you see that it's been going up in terms of how much they're giving back to their shareholders, but when we look at what they're putting into research yeah, and alternative fuels. It's been steady in the low single digits. Uh, so this is where you get the perspective that right. they're not being a responsible corporate citizen because they could be doing more, but they're not. Is that fair? Not really fair. I mean, I understand the emotional response. It seems as if they should be able to do more, but these are very long-term, you know, spending plans. And I'll point out on a net basis, overall, ExxonMobil makes less profit per dollar of sales than McDonald's. McDonald's makes, then Coca-Cola makes. It's just a very visceral issue, the price of oil. So they're just in the spotlight right now because it's so important in people's lives. Exactly. Mike Santoli, thank you All very right. much. I appreciate the perspective, pal. Thank you. Dan? All right. And on